Conrad, you know, from Mantra Inspired Money. So you've got, uh, we've got a very interesting question for you. How do I achieve the best investment and insurance outcome without compromising cash flow? Is that actually possible? Uh, I think, and thanks, uh, I, I guess it is. I mean, the reality is it's always about uh, understanding where your money's going and what it's doing for you. And, uh, and Ruben touched on understanding the, the flow and the balance sheet and the, and the P&Ls. And, and those things are important when you're looking at businesses uh, primarily because if money's being used in a way that it's uh, being used once and never again, then obviously there's a finite use for it. Uh, but if you're using your, your cash flow to add further revenue streams or enhance the, the, the revenue streams that you've got going by um, increasing your efficiency and your use of technology, um, so that your delivery of your of your services is, is, is a lot more uh, profitable, then those things are, are, are very important. I'm guessing that's what you look at as well, Ruben, when, you, when you're looking at your, your client. Um, the, the other side of it is when I talk to people about investments and, and making investing a priority because the reality is that in, in most instances um, you, you can't retire until you have replaced your, your, your PAYG or your, or your self-generated income streams. Uh, or you can't effectively retire. So, you know, there's, there's many um, books on creating wealth that talk about investing first um, with a view to generate the, the cash flow in the back end or, or the, the passive income streams in the back end. And that's, and that's, a, that's something I, when I talk to any client and any self-employed person, is something to put at the paramount of the discussion and to make it a priority because without that priority, everything else becomes a priority. Um, and that's, that's, that's another adjunct discussion we have in relation to cash flow and where you spend money. And, and, and I, I guess in, in, the, in the last piece of that discussion is when, when you're running your own business, and uh, I touch on this a lot with people, it's a case of if you're not able to turn up to work for whatever reason, uh, be it health um, or some other priorities that turn up in your life that stop you from working, then there needs to be a fallback position that allows you to continue to generate that income stream or protect that income stream. And, and those, th those insurances that, that come into place, be it key man insurance for a, for a business that can replace a person to come into a job, or, or income protection and trauma insurance for the individual in case they can't go back to work, is also um, beneficial. It's also uh, cash flow dependent, but again, something that people don't prioritise early enough, and therefore, um, when you, when, you, when you start with the end in mind and think, okay, well, fine, I need to look after these things because if I go and buy a house without those types of protections in place and my, my, my income stream dries up, then I'm not going to have that house or I'm not going to have that car. Um, but many people go out there and buy cars and, and, and uh, computer equipment and will get them insured, but they will never insure themselves. Um, who are the people that are generating the income stream to buy those assets? And it's, it's quite a, a, a funny position to be in because that's... That's the, the reality. It's the first thing that goes, but it's the first thing that's required in most instances when things hit the... So hit why, the do, why do you think they're not doing that? I mean, generally speaking. I think it's a, it's a case of prioritising and understanding, um, you know, where, where, to spend, where to spend the money. Um, and, and, and they don't want to address that topic, they're scared. In, in some areas, there, there is an element of, of, uh, of that. I mean, particularly where there are cases of um, historical issues or health issues within families. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of ignorance that, that's, that's paid towards that. Um, it's easier to, to not address it than, than, uh, than to address it. Yes. Um, but the reality is most of the situations are fairly simple to address. Yeah. Uh, and um, cash flow funding for personal insurances can be done a myriad of different ways that don't necessarily have to hurt the bottom line of the business. So, um, you know, it, it's better to investigate the options than it is just to stick your head in the sand. Could you give us a couple of um, mm, ideas? Yeah, sure. I mean, probably better coming to you directly. No, I mean, the direct conversation is always fantastic because it's 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 more specific. But I mean, in general speak, um, particularly with people that that have their own businesses, I, I understand that you know cash flow is king, and and where you spend it's important. Um, deductibility is also something that people look for uh, when you're looking at at, at paying uh, paying for things and. Superannuation funds tend to be uh, a forgotten thing with self-employed people as well, yes. and um, and through your superannuation fund you can own some insurances, uh, which obviously you will get the tax deduction on, on the on the contribution to your superannuation fund. Obviously, depend upon your your personal situation, um, and then from that that um, that uh, that contribution you can cover off some personal insurances, not all, but some, um, and that's. 
you know, that's again washing money through a situation, hopefully using it with some investment philosophy behind it and some benefit to, to pay for some insurances, uh, as opposed to all just cost and insurance based. So there, there needs to be some conversation so that the retirement planning part still still is a, is a, is factored in, in the in the in the piece. So you can get investment insurance without putting a cash flow. Without a doubt. Yeah.